Can you imagine a world where there is no fear? A world of trust, of peace, and of love. Well, two years ago, I went out on a journey where I wanted to create such a world. But as I grew up, I was so afraid of being seen, because if someone saw me, they might realize that I was a mistake. And that was in the 70s. It's when Star Wars hit the screens, and my favorite figure was Yoda. And Yoda, he said that that fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering. And of course, I wanted to be the Jedi. You know, the heroes in Star Wars, the ones who have access to the Force. But in reality, I thought my life would be tough and a lot of hard work. But at the age of 31, a friend of mine she gave me a call, asking, "Christina, do you want to run a 10-kilometer-long race with me?" Whoa, that's really far. But I did say yes, and I was. So happy, the first three kilometers, I could keep the same pace as she did. Well, then I had to struggle for the last seven, of course, but I did reach the finishing line, and I felt, "Whoa, you did great!" And I think I could have run a little bit further. And since then, I've been running longer and longer distances. I did 100-kilometer races, 24-hour races, and I ran all the way from Turkey to Finland. And 11 years after my first race, I was sitting in the office when a colleague sent me an email. And as I opened that email, I saw that, whoa, there are world records on treadmill. And that that 48-hour record—it's 310 kilometers. I think I could beat that. But, I'm not a world record holder. I mean, I dropped out of high school because I thought I wasn't good enough. And it has to be a public event. But somehow my finger kept coming back again and again to that email, and finally I realized I do want to set that world record. I want to fulfill my dream. So I got a grip on myself, and here I am on that treadmill. And I passed the old world record more than two hours ago, and there's hundreds of people in the gym, and I see joy in their eyes. I feel warmth, and there's 10,000 people following me on the web. And the day after, I have received 481 emails, and people are saying, "Whoa." If you could do that, well, then I can do this. And I realized that, oh my God, what I'm doing is affecting people. Okay, well, let's do something good then. And I look at the wall around me, and I see that xenophobic parties are growing in Sweden and in Europe, and they are growing based on fear, fear of strangers. And Yoda, he said that fear is the path to the dark side. And I don't want a world of fear. I want a world of trust. And the fear is mainly polarized between the Western world and the Muslim world. And I'm a Westerner, so I'm thinking, okay, why not just do what I usually do? Put on my running shoes and go running through Iran, a Muslim country with Sharia laws. Put all my trust into those strangers that I don't know. And what if it works? What if I can create a world of trust? And I also realize that the fact that I'm a woman will make this journey even stronger. Well, provided that it works. Because <laughs> what if people in Iran? What if they won't like what I'm doing? What if they will? 
run after me and beat me and, and, and maybe rape me and, or put me to jail. Okay, I need to create some security. So I write a letter to the regime in Iran asking for their permission to run through the country. And I do get a permission. And I'm thinking, wow, that's great. Now I have some protection. And then a Swedish journalist calls me asking, can I come along, take pictures, write articles? And I'm thinking, wow, perfect. He will spread my message. And besides that, he will keep track of me. Wonderful. More security. And then an Iranian movie company calls me asking, can we make a documentary? And I'm thinking, whoa, locals. Perfect. I'm set. Let's go out and trust the world. But the movie company don't get a permission, so they can't come. The journalist, he doesn't get a visa, so he can't join. And finally, the government withdraws the permit, so I'm having no permit. And then my sister calls me, and she asks, Christina, how do you expect me to take care of mom's and dad's sorrow if you never come back? I must be the most selfish person in the world. But I can't live my life according to my sister's fear. I want to live my life the way I want to live it. So I buy a ticket and I fly to Iran and here I am at the border towards Turkey just ready to start my run. But I don't understand the language and they don't understand me and, and how am I going to find my way? I can't read. But come on, Christina, what is running about? Just put one foot in front of the other. You've done it a thousand times before. Come on, you can do it. And I keep on running, and I reach a city, and I find a camping. And as I'm sitting outside the tent, the guy who's running the camping, he comes and says, Lunch for you, missus. What? For me? <laughs> well, well, thank you. And I eat it, and I clean the plate and give it back to him and asking him, do you know where I can find Wi-Fi? And he points at the restaurant across the street, and I go there, and they are preparing for a wedding. But I can sit down, and, and as I'm sitting there uploading pictures, they put a lot of food in front of me. And, hey, I didn't order. No, missus, but you are a guest in our country. Welcome to Iran. And I'm not allowed to pay. And as I'm running, people will stop their cars and they give me fruit. And if they don't have fruit, they buy fruit, three, four kilos of fruit. So I'm having a really good time. Well, but I do have some slight problems. It is pretty warm. And when it's 50 degrees Celsius, I look like this. But just drink a lot of water and replace the salt then it works. And one Iranian man, he creates a group on Telegram. It's like Messenger. And he adds the friends he knows lives along the way where I'm running. And they had their friends, and they had their friends. And suddenly, I have a group of 50 people who wants to help me. And there's always someone who knows someone who knows someone who lives in the city where I'm heading. So when I'm getting there, 
that someone is standing in the street saying, hey, you must be Christina. And tonight, you will sleep in my home. And this woman, she has given birth to 10 children. And as I enter through her door, she just gives me the biggest hug. And then she asks, can I see a picture of your mother? Well, yeah, sure. And I find one on my cell phone. And she looks at it. You know, Christina, I know exactly how worried your mother is for you. And the morning after when I leave her, she walks behind me with a bucket of water, splashing it onto the ground, because it's a symbol that's supposed to give me a safe journey. And in Iran, the guest is a friend of God. And you don't leave the friend of God alone. So here I'm sitting, trying to blog with this audience. Do you feel the peace? <laughs> it turns out when I am in Iran, the biggest fear I have is the fear of never being left alone. And that's in conflict with the fear of making these wonderful people sad if I would say, can you please leave me alone for a while? So when I reach 200 kilometers of a national park where it's open spaces, it's just me, the beautiful nature, Ooh, I feel a little bit relieved. But the most beautiful thing is that there is one tiny village. It's only 50 houses along this road. And of course, there is someone who knows someone who knows someone who lives in this little village. And she stands there waiting for me. Well, she doesn't say welcome because she cannot speak English. But she takes me to her home. And here you see the drinking water on the canisters on the porch. And there are the diapers from her two months old son. There's sheep wolves behind a wall. And I realize this is not a rich woman. But in the evening, she gives me a large portion of rice and meat. And her children get some meat, but she doesn't take any meat for herself. And then I get to sleep in the sleeping room, and the family sleeps in the living room. And in the morning, when I'm leaving, I, I just feel I want to give her something. And I do find a big bag of pistachio nuts in my, in my baby jogger. Please. But she just shakes her head. No, oh, please. Then she takes a few and gives to her daughter. Please. And then she raises her hand. She puts her hands around my hands. And then we're just standing there, looking into each other's eyes, feeling connected. Then she finally receives the bag. And she follows me out from the village. And there she is. She's so far away. But she also lives in here. I do reach the border towards Turkmenistan. But this is not a story about running. It's a story about affecting the world. I did run with a video camera, and for eight days, an Iranian photographer was with me. And two guys took that material and compiled it into a trailer and into a documentary. And now, more than 26 million people have seen these. And these are some of the comments that people made. And for me, this is pure beauty. Because behind each and every comment, there is a person who knows that the true core of humankind is love. And each time I follow my heart or the will of the force, something unexpected happens. 
And in Iran, it turned out that families don't trust each other. But now they saw a woman running from family to family, being safe, no matter where she was. And it created a lot of pride in Iran. And one family where I've been sleeping, they became so happy to see this. So they rented a restaurant and invited all the 34 different families where I've been sleeping. And they did that to celebrate themselves, their own hospitality and friendliness. And at this party, they gave me the most beautiful letter. And it ended with, if you, as an outsider, can trust us, then we can also trust each other and be graceful to each other. You gave us a better world, and we are grateful for that. And now I know that by being trust, by acting trust, trust was created, not only in the persons I met, but in thousands and in millions around the world. And by being focused on what I wanted to create, by letting myself be vulnerable and not letting fear stop me, I got access to that force. And I became that Jedi that I actually always have been. But the most beautiful is yet to come. And that is that each and every one of you who is sitting here, you are also a Jedi. You do also have access to that force. And we get that by being focused on what we want to create, by letting ourselves be vulnerable, and using fear to help us fulfill our dreams, but never to let it stop us from doing that. And this is the earth. It's our home. I know it's still a lot of fear out there. But I also know that it's each and every one of us who creates the world that we live in. And the greatest gift we can give to the world is to fulfill that dream that's in our heart. It doesn't matter if it's big or small. But when we do go out and fulfill that dream, that's when we create a world of trust, of peace, and of love. Thank you. <laughs>